Personal protective equipment. Objectives of this video are What are personal protective equipment or PPE? Importance of wearing PPE Principles for selection and use of PPE Methods for donning and doffing of personal protective equipment Personal protective equipment refers to a variety of barriers used alone or in combination to protect mucous membranes, airways, skin and clothing from contact with infectious agents. PPE is used as a part of standard precautions including aprons, gowns, gloves, masks, protective eyewear or goggles, boots or shoe cover, and cap or head cover. What will happen if a healthcare worker is not wearing any barrier while working? If a healthcare worker is not wearing PPE, then any route of transmission will pose a threat to the healthcare worker as well as the patients. To prevent transmission of pathogens to both healthcare workers and patients, appropriate PPE should be worn at all times while working. When used properly, personal protective equipment acts as a barrier between microorganisms and your skin, mouth, nose or eyes, the mucous membranes. The barrier has the potential to block transmission of contaminants from blood, body fluids or respiratory secretions. Personal protective equipment may also protect patients who are at high risk for contracting infections through a surgical procedure or who have a medical condition, for example immunodeficiency, from being exposed to substances or potentially infectious material brought in by visitors and healthcare workers. When used properly and with other infection control practices such as hand washing, Using alcohol-based hand sanitizers and covering cough and sneezes, it minimizes the spread of infection from one person to another. Where to wear personal protective equipment? Personal protective equipment is designed and issued for a particular purpose in a protected environment. Do not wear outside healthcare setting or in cafeteria, shops or markets places. This inappropriate wearing of PPE may also lead to a public perception of poor practice within the facility. Personal protective equipment provided for staff in areas where there is high risk of contamination. Principles for use of personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment reduces but does not completely eliminate the risk of acquiring an infection. It is important that it is used effectively, correctly and at all times when contact with blood and body fluids of patients may occur. 1. Use PPE based on the risk of exposure. 2. Avoid any contact between contaminated PPE and surfaces, clothing or people outside the patient care area. Do not share personal protective equipments. 4. Change personal protective equipments completely and thoroughly wash hands each time you leave a patient to attend another patient or another duty. 5. Follow hand hygiene. 6. Use of personal protective equipment does not replace other infection control measures. Continuous availability of personal protective equipment and adequate training for its proper use are essential. Gloves. Gloves protect both patients and healthcare workers from exposure to infectious organisms that may be carried on hands. 1. Wear gloves, clean or non-sterile when touching blood, body fluids, secretions, excretions, and mucous membranes. 2. Change gloves between contacts with different patients to prevent transmission of microorganisms. 3. Change gloves between procedures on the same patient to prevent cross-contamination between different body sites. 4. Change gloves if touching equipment or computer keyboards after patient contact. 5. Hand hygiene should be performed before putting on gloves and after removal of gloves. 6. Do not reuse gloves. 7. Avoid prolonged and indiscriminate use of gloves as it may cause adverse reactions and skin sensitivity. Type of gloves Non-sterile, single-use medical gloves are available in a variety of materials. The most common are natural, rubber latex or NRL, and synthetic materials, for example, nitrile. 
NRL remains the material of choice due to its efficacy in protecting against blood-borne viruses. However, sensitivity to NRL in patients and healthcare workers may occur. Alternative glove types should be used when patients have latex allergies. Gowns Gowns protect healthcare workers' arms and exposed body areas and prevent contamination of clothing with blood, body fluids or other potentially infectious pathogens. The need and type of gown selected is based on nature of patient interaction including anticipated degree of contact with infectious material. Wearing of isolation gowns and other protective apparel is mandated by the OSHA Bloodborne Pathogen Standard 1991. Clinical and laboratory coats or jackets worn over personal clothing for comfort and or purposes of identity are not considered PPE. A clean non-sterile apron or gown is generally adequate to protect skin and prevent soiling of clothes during procedures and patient care activities that are likely to generate splashing or sprays of blood or body fluids. When applying standard precautions, an isolation gown is worn when contact with blood or body fluids is anticipated. Isolation gowns are worn in combination with gloves and with other PPE when indicated. For example, BSL-3 or BSL-4 laboratories. Fully cover arms and body front from neck to the mid-thigh or below while wearing gown. This will ensure that clothing and exposed upper body areas are protected. Plastic aprons. Use these single-use plastic aprons when there is a possibility of sprays or spills to protect clothes that cannot be taken off. Store unused aprons in designated area away from potential contamination. Removing aprons and gowns. Remove aprons and gowns before leaving patient care area. This prevents possible contamination of the environment outside the patient's room. They should be removed in a manner that prevents contamination of clothing or skin. The outer contaminated side of the gown is turned inward and rolled into a bundle and then discarded into a designated container for waste or linen. Mask Wear a mask to protect mucous membranes of the mouth and nose when undertaking procedures that are likely to generate splashes of blood and other infectious material. Wear surgical masks as part of standard precautions and also when droplet transmission is expected in patient care. For example, patients with TB or measles. They are loose-fitting, single-use items that prevent splashes or sprays from reaching the mouth and nose of the person wearing them. Considerations when using a surgical mask include 1. When they become soiled or wet 2. Never reapply after they have been removed 3. Do not leave them dangling around the neck 4. Do not touch the front of the mask while wearing it 5. Hand hygiene should be performed upon touching or discarding a used mask. 6. Children should wear a specifically designed mask and their oxygen saturation should be monitored. Protective eyewear and face shield Wear protective eyewear and face shields to protect the mucous membranes of eyes when conducting procedures that are likely to generate splashes of infectious material. If disposable, discard appropriately. If they are reusable, decontaminate them according to the manufacturer's instructions. Eye protection Use goggles with a manufacturer's anti-fog coating. They provide reliable, practical eye protection from splashes, sprays and respiratory droplets from multiple angles. Prescription glasses can be worn beneath these goggles. Goggles must fit snugly, particularly from the corners of the eye across the brow. Contact lenses are not protective and may pose a potential source of keratitis if infected. Face Shields Use face shields, which are single-use or reusable, as an alternative to protective eyewear. Compared to other forms of eye protection, a face shield provides protection to other parts of face as well as the eyes. Face shields extending from chin to crown provide better face protection against splashes or sprays. Removing face and eye protection Remove eye protection gear only after gloves have been removed. Do not touch front of a mask 
protective eyewear or face shield because it is contaminated. The ties, earpieces and headband are relatively clean and can be touched with bare hands. Cleaning reusable face and eye protection. Follow manufacturer's instructions. Generally clean with a detergent solution. Completely dry them before storage. Caps and boots or shoe covers. Wear caps and boots or shoe covers where there is a likelihood that the patient's blood, body fluids or other infectious material may splash, spill or leak into the hair or the shoe. Launder caps and shoe covers appropriately if they are reusable according to the institutional policy. Discard used caps and shoe covers in red bag. Do not reuse disposable caps and shoe covers. Clean reusable boots. Patient care equipment. Handle patient care equipment soiled with infectious materials with care in order to prevent exposure to skin and mucous membranes, clothing and the environment. Clean and disinfect all reusable equipment as per manufacturer's instructions. Linen Handle, transport and process used linen that is soiled with infectious material with care and ensure that there is no leaking of fluid. Selection of PPE Selection of PPE should be done based on 1. Proximity to the patient and or infectious material 2. Likelihood of contact with blood or body fluids 3. Risk of transmission of infectious pathogens This video will demonstrate the sequence of donning and doffing of PPE from the US CDC guidelines. Donning of PPE The first step in donning of PPE is good hand hygiene. Follow all steps of hand hygiene before wearing personal protective equipment. The second step is donning the gown. Gown should be fastened at the back of the head and the waist by tying the ends. The third step is providing respiratory protection. A simple way is to use procedure mask. They are used for droplet precautions. Droplet precautions are used in the care of influenza patients. To apply this mask, gently crease the metal insert to create an indentation for your nose. Then cuff the elastic bands or tying ends around your ears and spread up the mask across your face from bridge of the nose to below your chin. Finally, ensure your mask is snug and comfortable over your face. Procedure masks also come with an eye protection. This mask is applied in a similar fashion. N95 respirator masks act as small filters to prevent passage of particles into the airways of the person wearing them. Only correct size respirators should always be used. Place a respirator over your nose, pull the strap and position one across your head and the other across the base of the neck. These elastic straps should be in touch with the skin of the head and remove any hair in the way. Press the mask along the edges to seal it with the skin. Finally, breathe deeply to feel any area where air is escaping out along the edges. Facial hair interrupts the seal and even a small amount of stubble may compromise the protection from pathogens. If the respirator you selected does not contain eye protection, then a separate eyewear must be worn to protect from splashes or sprays of infectious material. Protective eyewear may be safety glasses or goggles. Many shapes and styles are available. The final step in the procedure is wearing gloves. Ensure that the cuff of each glove covers the isolation gown. A secure grip is important for protection while providing care to the patient. Before entering the room, please ensure personal protective equipment are securely fit and comfortable. This will help you prevent adjusting your personal protective equipments while you're working. You're now ready to provide care to your patient. Let's have a quick review of donning the PPE. Doffing or removing of personal protective equipments. All movements in doffing should be done in a slow and intentional manner. This is to prevent aerosolizing any pathogens released while doffing the PPE. 
The first step is doffing the gloves. The gloves are removed first because they are likely to be the dirtiest item and are contaminated on the external surfaces. A. Grasp the first glove on the external surface at the cuff and gently peel off. B. Hold the removed glove in the other gloved hand. C. Slide the finger of under the gloved hand at the cuff, touching its clean side only, and gently peel off the second glove. D. Discard the gloves in the appropriate waste bag. The second step is to remove eye protection. The glasses or goggles are contaminated on the outside. So touch only the ear pieces or elastic bands for removing them. Eye protection should be discarded or placed in a designated area for disinfection and reuse. The third item is to remove the gown. The most contaminated area of the gown are the front and the sleeves. A. Unfasten the ties of the neck and waist. B. Slowly remove the gown by rolling it away from your body with the clean side out in the form of a bundle. C. Discard it in appropriate waste bag. D. Ensure the entire gown is inside the waste bag. E. Gowns hanging outside are a risk of contaminating the environment. The fourth step is the removal of respiratory protection. A. Touching the front of the mask should be minimized during removal. This is because this area of mask is contaminated with pathogens. B. When a mask or respirator has two elastic bands, they remove the bottom one first. C. Discard mask in waste bag. Finally, perform good hand hygiene immediately after removing all personal protective equipment. Let's have a quick review of doffing personal protective equipment. The Summary Personal Protective Equipment or PPE refers to a variety of barriers used alone or in combination to protect mucous membranes, airways, skin and clothing from contact with infectious agents. They provide protection for both healthcare workers and patients. Selection and use of PPE is based on risk assessment and potential pathogens. Always use the correct method of donning and doffing of personal protective equipments. Never wear personal protective equipments outside the area of use.